Hi besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel and welcome to a new reading vlog. In today's video, I am going to be reading three new to me fantasy romances and of course sharing all of my thoughts with you all. I have already started my first book for this vlog, so let's get straight to business. I am 43% of the way through Lady of Shadows. This is the second book in the Lady of Darkness series by Melissa K. Rorick. So I read the first book twice. I read it in April of last year. It was okay. It was like an average three-star read, but for whatever reason, I just kept thinking about it and I really wanted to give it another shot so I reread it in December and I'm really glad that I did because I enjoyed it much more on the second time around. I still rated it on Goodreads like a three to a three and a half star but I definitely saw a lot more potential on that second read and I feel really invested in finishing the series now. I do like the characters. I do want to know how they end up. So that brings us to now where I am almost halfway done with the second book. So if you don't know what the Lady of Darkness series is about, it is an adult fantasy romance series. Our main character is Scarlet Monroe. Scarlet is the daughter of a healer but she has been raised to be a very deadly assassin. In the beginning of the book, she ends up meeting a very mysterious man who takes quite an interest in her. He has been hired by the king to train his soldiers because he is a highly skilled warrior. And once Scarlet and him meet, they definitely have a connection and he becomes very curious about her and her past. Alongside this, tragedy strikes when a bunch of children at the nearby orphanage go missing. Scarlet has a very vested interest in those children and she wants to investigate what is going on there. Doing all of this, Scarlet starts to learn a lot more about the magical realms surrounding the human kingdom that she lives in. There are fey realms, vampire realms, witches, shifters, a lot of magical beings exist in this world, which I absolutely love. And this really turns Scarlet's life upside down as she starts to fall for this mystery man and learn a lot about herself. So that is generally kind of what the series is about. So I'm on Lady of Shadows book two and I am having so much fun. This book is just like so addicting, so bingeable. When I am not reading it, I am thinking about these characters and I'm fully invested in these plot lines. I'm seeing some foreshadowing going on that I'm really excited to see come to fruition. And I just really like what the author has done with book two. In book one, we have a lot of characters, but in book two, there are so many more characters. And I really like that because I think it is just bringing this series more to life. I am very invested in these new characters. I really like them. I love their dynamics with Scarlet. I like seeing their dynamics with one another and they just make the series a lot more interesting. I also love the new plot lines that are being introduced in book two. It's just making me very excited about the future of the series and all that we are going to see. So I'm having a great time with book two. Honestly, it is so much fun. It does have flaws. This book does have flaws and I do want to talk about those. Number one, the writing is... I don't know, sometimes it feels a little choppy, I guess is the best way for me to describe it. Sometimes I'm reading, things are flowing, it's all good, but then other times I am feeling that choppiness and it is throwing me off a little bit. So that is something that I do notice. And then this series does definitely have comparisons to Akatar and Throne of Glass. I saw that in book one, I'm seeing that in book two, and I have heard people talk about that in general. I think the biggest similarity I am seeing is the like characterization. I think that we have similar character types, both from the Throne of Glass series and the Akatar guitar series and just dynamics amongst one another. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but I think if you've read those series and if you've read this series, you probably know what I'm talking about. But I personally, for me, think that this series does differentiate itself enough for me to enjoy it. I have definitely read other books and other series that feel way, way more similar than this one does to those series. And generally, I don't really love that because I feel like if a book doesn't have enough originality, it's just not something I'm interested in reading. But personally, for me, I think the plot lines are what differentiate itself so much from those series. But I did just want to note that I definitely see those similarities. So just something to be aware of as you get into this. But I'm excited to see where things go. I do think that as the book goes on and kind of seeing where the plot's going and where I think the other books are gonna go. I think that we are going to get away from those similarities more and more, but it is just something I wanted to note. I'm not like mad at it, but I definitely notice it. But regardless of the similarities and some issues with the writing, I'm still having so much fun. I don't know. It's just one of those books that like, I'm having a really good time with it. The vibes are good. The characters are funny together. I love the banter and I'm really, really invested in what is going to happen in this series for Scarlet and for all the other characters. I feel like we're going to get some other romances as well, which I'm really looking forward to seeing those develop. I'm just, I'm here for it right now. I'm having a good time. So those are my thoughts on Lady of Shadows so far. I will definitely continue reading it more today. Other than that, I don't really know what else I want to read in this vlog. I'm thinking Heat of the Everflame or The Road of Bones 
or like the next book in the Lady of Darkness series or Reign of Shadows and Endings. I'm also contemplating picking that up. So that is another series by Melissa K. Rorick. And I was watching Aaron from Booked and Busy and Steph from Stephanie Bookish. They were doing Patreon sprints this weekend and Aaron was talking about how she read Reign of Shadows and Endings and she really loved it. She said it was one of the best fan roles that she's read in a while. And if Aaron loves a fantasy or fantasy romance, I'm moving it up on my TBR. So I'm contemplating reading that as well. I don't know if I wanna finish the Lady of Darkness series first, before I read that one, but just the way that Aaron was talking about it got me so excited. So truly, I have no idea what I'm going to be reading this week. We shall find that out together, but I'm very excited and I hope that I have some new favorites out of this vlog. So that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna go keep reading and I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Hello besties, happy Wednesday. So first things first, happy Love is Blind reunion day to all who celebrate. The Love is Blind reunion is tonight at six o'clock my time. I am very excited to watch it. I've been planning my entire day around it and I just truly cannot wait. I am so here for the updates, for the drama. I hope we have some accountability. I hope Nick and Vanessa act normal because sometimes they're a little too unhinged. And I also hope that they ask good questions. I feel like they don't often ask the questions that we, the audience really want to know. And I just hope that they make some people answer for their crimes. But anyway, I'm very excited about that. I will give you guys my thoughts on that tomorrow because I had a really good time talking about that in my last vlog and a lot of you were in my comments talking about it as well. So I feel like all the angel besties are watching Love is Blind. And if you're not, you absolutely should because it is the most beautiful mess of a TV show. So now let's talk books. Number one, Lady of Shadows. I binged this book last night. I binged the last 60% of this book last night. I truly could not put it down and I had such a good time, you guys. I am just thinking back to April of 2023, that version of me, I think it was April, sometime in the spring. And I read Lady of Darkness and I was like, eh, three stars, not that great, don't care, not gonna continue on with the rest of the series. Who was that? Certainly not me, because now that I've read the second book in this series, I am horrified at the thought of if I had never decided to reread Lady of Darkness, give it another shot and continue on with the series, because I had so much fun reading this book. Oh my God. It has a couple flaws, which I will talk about, but, I had so much fun and I am so here for this series and I think it's going to become like potentially one of my favorite fantasy romance series. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that yet, but I am so invested in the story, in these characters. I am here for it. So let me just talk about a few things that I really did like and then I will just talk about a few of the flaws that this book does have. But number one, the plot I just thought was so much fun and I think that we brought a lot of interesting elements to this book. The inclusion of all of these new characters I think just really did liven up the story and make things more complex complex, created a lot of tension, a lot of problems, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all plays out. I feel like in the first book, yeah, we had a few different plot lines, but it was still pretty narrow. But with the second book, things have really exploded. There are going to be consequences for multiple people, multiple courts, multiple different magical beings. And I really, really loved that. And I think that that was very, very well done. And speaking of plot, the plot twists in this book, oh my God, there were definitely a few plot twists that I saw coming from a mile away, whatever, but there were some that I certainly did not, particularly the final plot twist of this book. If you have read it, it's on the very last page. Are we kidding? I could have never predicted that. I was shocked. My jaw dropped, went into the other room. Like I was fully stunned at that reveal. And I'm very excited for the inevitable, terrible repercussions, potentially, I don't know. Like maybe it won't be that bad, but it feels like it's gonna be kind of bad. I feel like we've got some vengeful things coming and I'm very curious and looking forward to all of the once again mess that that is going to be but I thought that that was a really great plot twist and like shout out to Melissa K. Rorick like that was really cool I loved that didn't see it coming at all I also liked that as this book went on we included more POVs not too many but we are adding a few more and I think that that is just making the storytelling better I'm enjoying seeing the POVs of characters particularly that have been painted in a certain way in a certain negative light but then getting to be in their head and kind of seeing where they are coming from I think that is good storytelling and I think that it is 
rounding out the characters so they don't feel as flat, which I really did love. As far as the romance goes, we do have some spice in this book. I definitely enjoyed myself. I am curious to explore other potential romances in this cast of characters, and I hope that we get to do that, and I hope we get their POVs so we can like really feel that romantic tension. But I do enjoy the main couple of this book, and I'm excited to see what happens for them. Obviously, with how book two ended, you know, things are gonna be interesting in that department, but I'm definitely here for it and rooting for them, and I really do like them together. And then as far as just a few things about this book that I didn't love, I mean, I talked about the writing yesterday. It does feel a little bit choppy sometimes, so that is something that I hope to see improvement on throughout the whole series. I don't know, maybe, you know, as the series goes on, things will flow a little bit better. And then as much as I do really like these characters and I'm invested in their journey, they did some things that annoyed me, <laughs> and I was just like, what? are we doing? Be so real with me right now. So they definitely have some annoying traits. There is some things that they do that I'm like, why are you like this? Why are you doing this? Particularly our main character, Scarlet. I think she's so cool in some scenes and then some scenes she irritates me, but I still really like the book and the series overall. So I decided to give this book a four star rating. I had a blast. I had so much fun. I think that you guys should pick this series up. I think if you have similar tastes to me, if you tend to like most of the fantasy romances that I recommend, you should absolutely give this one a shot. There are also magical creatures in this book. We have this like magical panther. We have this magical hawk. We have, I think like, the, you know, whispers of a dragon situation. So I think that this story is just like really interesting. It's very dynamic and I'm super invested. I'm so excited to see what else happens in this series. I definitely want to read books three and four and five very soon. Next month, I'm going on a trip and I'm going to be on some very long flights. I'm already thinking that I might try to read books three and four on that trip, particularly on the flights, because as Lady of Shadows has shown me, once I get into these books, I just can't put them down. So I think being on a long flight would be a really good time for me to continue on with the series. So I might do that. We'll see, as long as I'm in the mood for it. All right, and then as I said to you guys yesterday, I wasn't sure what else I was going to read in this vlog. So I went over to my Instagram stories and I posted two polls of two different sets of books and had my Instagram followers vote on what I should read next, what did you guys want to see in a reading vlog, and the results were very, like, lopsided. I kind of thought that there would be a little bit more competition between each of these books. There certainly was not. There was an overwhelming majority that voted for one particular book in each of those polls. So in the first story that I put up, I had Reign of Shadows and Endings, and then A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen, and A Fate Inked in Blood won kind of by a landslide. So 79% of you voted for A Fate Inked in Blood, and only 21% voted for Reign of Shadows and Endings. So I am reading A Fate Inked in Blood. I've actually read a little bit of it already. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I don't know. I thought that the votes would be a little more spread out, but it was very much like, nope, Fate Inked and Blood won very, very quickly. And I've actually decided I am going to read the entirety of the Lady of Darkness series before I pick up the Legacy series by Melissa K. Rorick, the first book being Reign of Shadows and Endings. They are connected. The author says that you don't have to read Lady of Darkness first, but that there are connections that could potentially spoil things for you in Lady of Darkness. I'm not really sure, but just the fact that there are connections, I think that I will have have the best possible reading experience of the Legacy series if I do finish the Lady of Darkness series first. So I'm gonna put Reign of Shadows and Endings on the back burner regardless. I mean, this poll kind of decided for me, but then after I saw the results, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna finish the Lady of Darkness series first. I think that I will get the most out of the Legacy series if I read Lady of Darkness first. So I'm not gonna be picking that book up for a while, but hopefully I'll be able to get to it this summer because I'm really, really excited about it, especially after hearing Erin say such wonderful things about it. And then the other poll that I put up, I did Heat of the Everflame versus The Road of Bones. Once again, we kind of had a landslide here. Heat of the Everflame got 73% of the votes, and then The Road of Bones got 27%. I definitely do still want to read The Road of Bones soon. That is actually on my March TBR. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it, but I do really want to because I've heard wonderful things. But after I finish A Fate Inked in Blood, I'm going to be reading Burn of the Everflame, which I am so excited. This is the second to last book, the final book coming out in June, and I really want to see what's going to happen in this book. I think that we're finally going to be breaking the romantic tension in Heat of the Everflame, if you know what I mean. So I'm looking forward to that and also just seeing kind of where the plot goes because Glow of the Everflame was obviously insane. So before we get to that book though, as I said, I have started A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This is a new release. It came out at the end of February. It is a fantasy romance inspired by Norse mythology. It is gorgeous, also has beautiful sprayed edges here, and I am 39% of the way through this book. So in A Fate Inked in Blood, we follow Freya. In the beginning of the book, we find out that she is married to this very terrible guy 
he is abusive, he is cruel, he is just awful to her, but he has some type of affinity from the gods where he's sort of able to control, I guess, sea life. I was a little bit <laughs> kind of confused on that, but he's essentially able to bring in fish to the village. And so everyone in the village kind of turns the other way whenever he is cruel or terrible because he does feed a lot of people. But Freya absolutely hates him. She's extremely unhappy. Her parents forced her to marry this guy and she's just lived a very unfulfilling life thus far. She's always wanted to be a warrior, but women are often not warriors and especially not the wife of this very cruel person. But one day Freya is out doing chores in her village and she comes across this group of warriors and she actually sees her husband with them and her husband who I guess didn't really want to be married to her much either essentially like sells her off to the leader of these warriors and this leader of the warriors makes her fight to the death with his son. His son's name is Bjorn and he is super hot obviously and immediately Freya notices him and they have like a little meet cute moment as well. She doesn't really want to fight him to the death. He doesn't want to fight her to the death obviously because he is much stronger than her but as the two are battling it out Freya reveals that she also has magic and an affinity from the gods. So she is known as the Shield Maiden, and essentially that means that she can't be killed in battle. She is always able to deflect any attack that comes at her. This only makes her more valuable to the man who kind of like purchased her from her previous husband because he heard a prophecy years and years ago that whoever controls the fate of the Shield Maiden would be able to unite all the people in their kingdom and rule them. And he's obviously after power. And so once he sees that Freya is the Shield Maiden, he's like, great, I'm going to take you as my second wife because he already has a wife, but he wants to fulfill this prophecy. And I'm going to have all the power and the riches. And essentially Freya is going to be my weapon. Freya is not happy about this either, but he does threaten her family, so she just has to go along with it. Once she gets back to his keep, he assigns his son, Bjorn, the really hot guy, to essentially watch over her, train her, protect her. And this is difficult for Freya because she is very attracted to Bjorn. Bjorn is very flirty with her, but obviously she gets married to his dad. So that does complicate things a little bit. And the two of them do fight feelings for each other as conflicts come up, as people try to kidnap Freya once they have heard about this shield maiden. And where I'm at in the book right now, Bjorn and Freya are kind of out on this quest. She has to do sort of like this trial for the gods and he is accompanying her on that. So that is what the book is about. I hope that that Made sense. There's a lot going on. I'm still a little confused about a few things, but how I'm feeling about this book right now is I thought that the beginning was really exciting and really engaging. So much happened. I really liked Freya. She was such a fiery character and I was really excited to see her in this new setting, trying to understand her magic because she hasn't really dealt much with it. She's always hidden it away from everyone. And of course the tension between her and Bjorn, she's married to his father. He is kind of known as this playboy. He's very flirtatious. So the two of them have this interesting setup, but where I'm at in the book right now, I just feel like things are slowing down a little bit and I'm hoping things do do pick back up. We do have some fun tension. We do have some fun banter, but I just don't feel like it's enough. I feel like this is a good book, but I'm just not like super, super excited, feeling butterflies by the romance, really intrigued to see how things go. I'm liking it, but it's not like, oh my god, I need to get through and I need to know what's going to happen. And I'm not really sure why that is. I think that the writing is good, but I think right now it just doesn't have all of my attention and me super excited about it. So I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to continue to see what I think. I do hope that the tension between our characters heats up a little bit and the plot continues to kind of move and keep things exciting the way that it did in the beginning of the book. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. This is good, not great, but hopefully that will change as things go on. So I'm going to go continue reading this and then I'm going to watch the Love is Blind reunion and we will talk tomorrow with thoughts on both of those things. Hi friends, happy Friday. How are we doing? So I wanted to give you guys some reading updates. I have made it a little bit farther into A Fate Inked in Blood and then I also started Heat of the Everflame. So we will talk about both of those in one second. Let's do a quick wrap up on the Love is Blind reunion. Honestly, I don't have a ton to say. I don't feel like super disappointed by it, but I don't feel like, oh my god, it was incredible. I do wish that we got to talk to the cast a little bit more and dig deeper into some of the like things that happened in the season. What a concept. Specifically, I feel like Chelsea and Jimmy, we didn't really dive into them too much and focused a lot on like Jess and Jimmy, which like, who cares? They obviously are like totally fine and whatever. That was very weird that we focused on that. And then also I have no issue having former cast members at the reunion to ask a couple questions. That's cute. But I feel like we did a lot of focusing on them. And I was like, respectfully, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not like super concerned about what they're up to. I can just follow them on Instagram if I want to check. So I don't know. It was totally fine. But can we take a moment? The Trevor scene, 
I felt my soul leaving my body during that whole entire fiasco. We'll say that was so uncomfortable and I don't feel bad for him. He 100% did that to himself. Like obviously he was there for the wrong reasons. He completely embarrassed himself, like all of that, whatever. But I was physically uncomfortable. I needed to like get up and like do a lap around the house after <laughs> that scene because I was like the secondhand embarrassment that is pouring out of my screen and into my pores and my brain and my bloodstream Dream is overwhelming me. That was so uncomfortable. I literally never want to see that again. Oh my god. So that was probably like the highlight, but also like the worst part of the reunion. But I, I enjoyed myself. It was pretty good. So Love is Blind season six is over and I'm so sad because I do genuinely love the show. I know that the next season is being filmed in Minneapolis. So I'm excited for that. I think it's gonna come out like in the fall, hopefully, because... I need that show in my life, honestly. But let's get to some reading updates. So I'm gonna talk about Heat of the Everflame first because I'm only a little bit of the way into it. This is a 776 page book and I am on page 175. So I have 600 pages to go. And I'm actually reading this on my Kindle because this is so heavy. And it's over a thousand pages on the Kindle, which is just, it's daunting to say the least. But I am really enjoying myself. I absolutely love this series. Like this is going to be one of my favorite fantasy romance series of all time for sure. This is the third book and I'm really enjoying how this book starts because it definitely presenting a lot of challenge for our characters and we are also getting a lot of world building in the first like 200 pages of this book which I'm really really happy about. I have always wanted to explore the other kingdoms because they've just sounded so interesting to me and needless to say we are definitely getting that in the beginning of this book and I'm loving that. We're getting a little bit of traveling so I'm really liking the way that this is starting and the romantic tension is of course wonderfully done. Penn Cole is so fantastic at building tension and we still have quite a long way to go. So I'm really enjoying myself. This has been very fun so far and I will keep you guys updated on how I feel like this third installment is going. All right, and then I have made a little bit more headway into A Fate Inked in Blood. And I don't know, you guys, I don't know. I feel like I've had, man, all of my like most anticipated releases of the year have been just like slightly underwhelming to very underwhelming. I don't know. I do not dislike this book, but I am just not finding the romance to really do a ton for me. I feel like we could do so much more. I feel like it's fine. I feel like it's okay, but I feel like there's just so much that we could work with, so many ways that we could turn up the tension and the heat and the forbidden aspect of it all. And we're just not. I really want the romance to grip me more. And just as of right now, it's not doing that, but I've only made it a little bit farther and I just want more. You know, I see the potential. I see see some very good things that Danielle L. Jensen has built into these characters and like possibilities for them, but I'm just not really seeing that come to fruition. So the romance for me is just okay. And this is a well-written fantasy. Like I'm not going to sit here and say this is like a bad book, poorly written, anything like that. Clearly this is a very like well-established, well done in my opinion, Norse mythology fantasy, but I am such a character girl. As much as I talk about in fantasy romances that I want there to be an established plot, I need the romance, right? Like I need that experience excitement of the romance coinciding with a decent plot and I feel like we're a little imbalanced in that area so I don't really know. I'm still processing how I feel about this book so I am going to keep reading and I hope that how I'm feeling about it is making sense. This is fine but I wanted a lot more so far and I'm going to give this book a fair shot as I continue to read it but yeah as of right now I'm just a little bit bored with the characters and the romance and I just don't feel that excitement for them. I don't feel this will they won't they. I mean we're getting that a little bit but I'm not feeling it. I'm being told that there's will they won't they. I'm being told all these things but I don't really think that's coming across like in the writing of these characters and their dynamic. So that's where I'm at with the fate inked in blood. I do want to finish this book today or tomorrow morning and give you guys my final thoughts. I'm really curious to see how this ends too and how our characters kind of end up breaking through some of these conflicts that I'm seeing but this is a good book. I'm just not like blown away by it right now. So those are all of my thoughts right now. I actually think I'm about to go on a walk because it is stunning outside. You guys, it is 60 degrees, which is essentially 80 degrees for March in Washington. So I'm going to go take advantage of that. And then tonight I will probably come back and read more of A Fate Inked in Blood. And I really, really hope that I will fall in love with this book as I continue to go on. But right now it's just like an okay time. So that is it for me today. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow with more updates.
friends, happy Saturday. I am here to give you my final thoughts on a fate inked in blood. And I finished it this morning. I think I am going to settle on a three star rating. I feel very conflicted about this book because I do think there are strong moments. I think that like the writing and the plot is very good and I did enjoy those aspects of this book, but I do feel that the characters in the romance just weren't enough for me. I wanted so much more. I really feel like we could have got so much more tension and angst between these characters. There is this like forbidden aspect of their relationship because she's married to his dad. It literally says like a forbidden romance, you know, on the inside dust jacket. And I think that the romance could have so benefited from leaning into that a little bit more. Like I said, internally, our main character Freya is like grappling with with, oh my god, I'm attracted to this guy, but you know, that's my husband's son technically. But I didn't feel like I saw that in their actions and their behavior towards one another. And frankly, a lot of the romance left me a little bit bored. I just wanted so much more from it. I wanted to feel more angst and tension. And there's a lot of high stakes going on here. So it's hard because I think that there are so many good pieces of this book and this story, but I feel like the execution overall left me underwhelmed. And that's kind of just my overall feelings of this book. I am underwhelmed. I wanted a lot more. I think as a fantasy, it does pretty decent as a fantasy romance. I think that it could have been a lot stronger. So this is gonna be a three star read for me. I enjoyed my time, but I definitely wanted so much more. And I think I expected a lot more and I didn't get it. So I'm really sad about that because this is one of my most anticipated reads of the year and I am left feeling like it is Mr. Perfectly Fine. So I don't know, I'd love to hear what you guys think of this book. Did you enjoy it? Do you feel similarly to me? I've seen kind of mixed reviews of it thus far. It did just come out, so we'll see how things go, but it's okay, it's pretty solid. I think just not, quite what I wanted from this book. And then as far as Heat of the Everflame, I have made a bit more progress. I'm actually, oh my god, I am at <laughs> a point in this book where I feel like something that we've been hinting at since book one is going to be revealed and I am nervous about it. So I've really been enjoying reading this book and I'm so, so excited to see what that reveal is gonna be and how that is going to affect essentially everything in this book and this series. But I've decided that I am going to end the vlog here. This is an 800 page book and I really do wanna get a video up for you guys this weekend. So I'm not gonna be finishing this book in this vlog, but just know it's going really well. I'm like a third of the way into it. And as soon as I'm done filming this clip, I am literally gonna start my next vlog and I will finish this book in that vlog. So, so you guys will definitely hear my thoughts on this in my next reading vlog. There's just no way that I'm going to be able to get through this book in the time that I had hoped to. So we will discuss this book in my next vlog sometime next week, but just know this is going super, super well. So in review, I've had honestly like a pretty decent reading week and the highlight 100% was Lady of Shadows. I'm really excited about that series. And I also would love if you've read that series, whether you finished it or you're a little farther than me, how are you liking the series as it has gone on? How do you think the series progresses? I'm just really excited about it. And I hope you guys pick it up and let me know what you think of it as well, because it's it's so fun to pick up a book and not really know how you're going to feel about it and then be pleasantly surprised by it. And I think that that's definitely my experience with the Lady of Darkness series as a whole and particularly Lady of Shadows. I just had so much fun with that book. And then Fate Inked in Blood, it was all right. It was okay. I feel underwhelmed, but I did enjoy many aspects of it. I just wanted so much more from the romance and I feel like there could have been so much more. Like I saw little bits and pieces that were so good, but I feel like we should have leaned more into them. So this was okay, but it just didn't really do a whole lot for me and give me that like butterfly romantic feeling that I really wanted from this book. And then of course the absolute love of my life, the Kindred's Curse Saga third book is still going absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to finish this and give you guys my full thoughts in my next vlog. So if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the sun emoji. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much and I will catch you guys in the next one.